Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us. Perhaps this is your very first time to be listening to the broadcast, and I say a very special welcome to you. We open our Bibles and find out what the Word of God actually says here on the broadcast. So if you can, reach over and get your Bible and turn with me as mine sits open to the book of Leviticus chapter 24. We've been in chapter 24 all week long, making some really great finds about some lessons on living life. Today, I'm going to begin reading at verse 10. Leviticus chapter 24, and beginning at verse 10 in just a moment, get something also on which you can jot some notes, not only notes from our study time, but also jot down how to contact us. I want you to do that. I have a free gift. The gift is a sample pack at our of our gospel tracts, and I'll say something more about about that here in just a moment, but let me lead into our Bible study time this way. Do you have a favorite TV preacher or teacher? Do you? I, I do. There are some guys I really enjoy watching. A couple of these guys are primarily apologists. They defend the Bible, they defend the faith, and they also try to help other people defend the faith. One of my very favorite guys was on, and all of a sudden, my brain had to do a double take. I asked myself, did he just say what I think he said? So I kept listening a little more carefully, and sure enough, he did say what I thought he said. And in a matter of about five minutes, he had taken and used God's name in vain four more times. Well, needless to say, I was shocked. I had put this man on a, on a pedestal a little bit, on a category of being a mature believer, but I had to take him off of that category status. I say all that because here in Leviticus 24, we have an actual incident of a man blaspheming God. In Leviticus, the code book on the laws for the Jewish people, we have a case study, not just simply the law book itself. If you have any doubts about how serious God is on commandment number three, just stay tuned because, friend, it doesn't get any more serious than life and death. Get your Bible get something on which to jot some notes. Join me in Leviticus, please, chapter 24. I mentioned that sample packet of gospel tracts here a moment ago. Uh, A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. A gospel tract is an evangelism tool. I want to put some of those tools into your hand. As a matter of fact, the one in my hand right now is entitled The New Birth, and we call this one our Hallmark Track. This is the gospel track that really put our ministry in business, if I could use that term. It is the one track used far more than any others, and by virtue of the responses we hear about, we have more people coming to Christ through this gospel track than any two or three others combined. The new birth. That's a longer track. Let me read part of what it says to you. It says this about the new birth. It says, a birth, talking about a physical birth, a birth is the coming into being of new life, which has the nature of its parents. When you were born the first time, you were made a partaker of the old nature, the sinful nature that we all receive from Adam. When you are born again, you become a partaker of the divine nature. Is this true for you? Do you have divine nature? Oh, friend, that's a pretty straight statement and a good question. Here's a great, clear presentation of the gospel, the new birth. At the end of the program, my announcer will give you our contact information. Have pen and paper ready, jot it down, or just go to our website, BibleTracksInc.org. Get the sample packet from us. Let's become partners in the gospel work, please. 
All right. If your Bible's open to Leviticus chapter 24, verse 10 begins this way. And the son of an Israelitish woman whose father was an Egyptian went out among the children of Israel, and this son of the Israelitish woman and a man of Israel strove or fought together in the camp. And the Israelitish woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord and cursed, and they brought him unto Moses, verse 12, and they put him in ward that the mind of the Lord might be showed them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Bring forth him that hath cursed without the camp, and let all that heard him lay their hands upon his head, and let all the congregation stone him. Thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Whosoever curseth his God shall bear his sin, and he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death, and all the congregation shall certainly stone him, as well as the stranger, as he that is born in the land, when he blasphemeth the name of the Lord, shall be put to death. There's the passage there in pretty clear, simple, straightforward language. I have uh, looked for a way to uh, trim down the reading of all this, and I really couldn't find any. But in the middle of giving this code of the law, on laws on worship and laws on daily life to the people, God throws in this narrative account. This was an actual story here, an actual event, and it appears here, and the fact that it does appear here is an indicator that the book of Leviticus was penned right after, within the first month after God had given Moses the law there on Mount Sinai. So the Ten Commandments would have been fresh in everybody's mind. Now, if you are taking notes here, jot down, first of all, these words, true case. Number one, true case based upon verse 10. This is not a made-up story. It's an actual occurrence. The son, this adult age son, is not named, but his mother is. Number two in taking notes, the tongue cursed. The tongue cursed based upon verse 11. The words used here to describe what this guy said are very interesting. Verse 11 says that he blasphemed the name of the Lord. That word there, blaspheme, literally means to violently pierce or to poke and, and, and drive a piercing thrust through something in a violent manner. We would use the word libel here to describe it in our day. The son said something in the heat of this fight with this other Israelite man that tore into the character of God. Perhaps it was something he had heard his Egyptian daddy say before the son and the mother left Egypt. I don't know. The other word in verse 11 that's used is the word cursed. This Hebrew word means that whatever it was the guy said, it was declaring God to be a worthless and insignificant being. Now, you tell me, how in the world does an adult age son who's old enough to have seen the plagues of Egypt, how does he say that Jehovah God is worthless? I don't know, but he did. The third thing to jot down is the task to condemn based upon verses 13 to 16, the task to condemn. Remember now, the law had just been given by God to Moses and then to the people. This is probably the very first event in which the commandment number three about taking God's name in vain had been openly broken, and they had to figure out what in the world they should do. How do we apply the code book? Well, they put the son in ward. Notice the W word. They put the son in ward in verse 12. They isolated him. They probably, you and I would call it, put him under house arrest to find out exactly how do we apply the code book. Let me move from being in ward here to talk about the who in verse 14. We move from the ward to the who. Every person who heard the blaspheming words was to take part in this punishment here. By placing their hands on the son's head, they were symbolically transferring the curse or the indictment onto him. Everybody was saying, you are guilty. Next is the why in verse 15. Those present had to clearly identify the law of God that had been broken. This son had cursed God. Very clearly, 
They openly owned the crime that was done. Finally, in verse 16, we find the what. The what. Listen. Listen again to part of verse 16. It says, He that blasphemeth the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death, and all the congregation shall certainly stone him. I'm going to stop right there. The fact that the people had to share in the stoning death would have made, obviously, a significant impact on them individually. They will have watched the man die and shared in his death. That death, though, was not murder. It was a judicial punishment. There's a difference. Their personal involvement would also have caused the people to know that breaking God's law was certainly serious business. I remind you, this son, this son was not a minor. He was an adult. His voice had rung out in the heat of a fight, and, and his wasn't under control necessarily of all that he was saying, but still, he's held responsible for his words. So please tell me. Has the God that you and I worship in the New Testament era, has he changed since the Old Testament times? I don't think so, has he? And has the sin here, has sin to be dealt with and how you and I are to deal with people who commit sin, has that changed? Well, yes, how it's dealt with by us has changed. But does God value his name less today than he once did? Friend, I don't think so. So, Are we to allow then fellow believers in today's New Testament era, are we to allow them to go on blaspheming God's name or flippantly use God's name and do nothing? Are we not in some manner to come alongside and in essence put our hand on them and identify to them their sin and hopefully move them to repent and mature in their life and conquer the and have victory over using God's name in vain? Can I just politely tell you this is going on all over kingdom come? I hear it in pulpits. I just told you a moment ago, I heard it on a television program, a Christian station of a man who was very well known. If I were to say his name or talk about some of the books he's written, you would know them. But friend, we have God's people using God's name in vain. And we wonder why the world doesn't take us seriously when we don't take seriously the name of our God. But tell me, dear listener friend, If you are taking God's name in vain, oh, not necessarily even in the heat of of an argument, you just use things like, oh my gosh, and oh my God. May I politely say, you are blaspheming the name of God. You say, Brother Mark, you're taking that too seriously. You're going overboard. No, no, friend, I'm not. I'm saying to you, you are blaspheming God's name. It's sin. Dear friend, if you're listening without Christ as Savior and you use such things, and those you would perhaps call not the worst things you say, you've just owned up the fact that you're a sinner and you've earned the right to die in your sin. But God loves you and has provided a way of escape through Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God who died to save your soul. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.